Hello and welcome to Where the Road Rises, Law Lessons Legacy with me, your host Eileen Curlin Walsh. Today we're going to revisit saving, financial planning, retirement planning for baby boomers and Gen Xers with our guest Sean O'Shea. Sean O'Shea is a financial advisor. He works with High Point Planning Partners and that's in Orland Park. Sean is a true Southsider. He graduated from St. Alexander's here in Palos Heights. He went to Marist and graduated also from University of Illinois. He is a certified financial planner, a chartered retirement planner consultant, and an accredited investment fiduciary. He has 15 years of experience helping families plan their financial security, around their goals and dreams. So welcome, Sean, to our show. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. How about starting with telling us a little bit about your story? Sure. Uh, so uh, a lot of it was in the, the introduction there. I've been doing this for going almost 16 years now. Uh, it's been uh, ever since graduating from, from U of I. Uh, it, it has been a uh, Road and building up the business over the last uh, 15 years or so, mm -hmm. doing financial planning and uh, 401k plans for yeah. businesses. And you came from right here. You grew up right here in Pales Heights. Yes, I did. Actually, uh, pretty uh, deep family roots here in Pales Heights. Uh, as you mentioned, I went to St. Al's here with a whole uh, big group of cousins. I've got uh, about 40 uh, first cousins, big Irish family, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, O'Shea's, O'Connell's, O'Brien's in there. Uh, but in, in Palis here, uh, my family goes back pretty far on my mom's side. Actually, my grandmother's family, some of the earlier uh, farming families in, in the community, uh, my great-grandmother, Virginia, was actually the first teachers at a you know, one-room schoolhouse on what would be 127th and Ridgeland right now, way back in the 1920s. So that, uh, that family has largely stayed in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandma still lives on what would be part of that original farmland to this day. So. And tell us, you have a great little story about growing up there and how your grandmother sowed the seeds of financial planning and mm -hmm. investing in you and your cousins. Uh, they did, thank you. Yeah, so it was definitely one of the first uh, you know, business ventures and first uh, introduction to uh, something along the lines of investing. So my uh, grandparents' house we shared a, a long uh, property line, which what was the, the Westgate Golf Course or Westgate Country mm -hmm. Club years ago. And as uh, my grandfather mow the big lawn, he'd fill up five gallon buckets of all of the, the stray golf balls that came <laughs> over the fence. So when my cousins and I would spend a lot of our, our summer days playing at, at grandma's, and we, I don't know who originally had the idea, but we set up a table against the, the fence by the 17th hole, and we sold lemonade and little bags of used golf balls to the, the golfers who came by. Uh, so we did that for a number of summers, for uh, many times during the summer, and uh, as a next step, uh, a less say financial lesson my grandparents had for us, they uh, took the money, they let us pick amongst a number of uh, stocks to invest in, and they put the money in a brokerage account with things like uh, you know, companies that we would have known when we were 10, 11 years old, Nike mm -hmm. and McDonald's, mm -hmm. and I'll let that sit and grow for some years up until just uh, a few years ago. Grandma decided it was time to divvy up the, the proceeds, so we, we split it up 19 ways, and uh, I think it helped out all each of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of my younger cousins made few student loan payments with it, and I know that that came right about the time where a uh, bill for my uh, for orthodontist for my daughter's braces came in. So that was yeah. something that paid off uh, yeah. for all of us. And it was mm -hmm. just a, a great lesson and uh, a good memory for 
yeah. you know, myself, my sibling. And maybe so. that's why you became a financial planner. Who uh, knows? I'd like to say that was a, an early interest. In yeah. It. So what about this uh, being a fiduciary? Uh, what does that mean in financial planning terms? And, and how does that separate you from other financial planners? Sure. Thanks for asking. So as you mentioned my credentials at the beginning. So it, uh, Certified Financial Planner and the Accredited Investment Fiduciary. So that, that CFP designation, and so I'm held as a, to put my client's uh, needs first. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, I'm, the advice that I'm giving is much more as a uh, consultant, like the same side of the financial table as a client, as opposed to representing specific in investments or having uh, uh, potential conflicts that yeah. Uh, of interest between and I'm giving advice so I have okay. to give recommendations in the best interest of the clients uh, mm -hmm. as a CFP and the portion of my business or work with businesses and the 401k plans mm -hmm. that AIF uh, accredited fiduciary designation uh, it really uh, it's shows that uh, in keeping up with that that they have a real process for mm -hmm selecting the, the investments, making sure they're appropriate for the, the company, for the employees, making sure that they're, they're competitive, right. uh, and keeping the, uh, the legal uh, obligations that the, uh, that the companies have to their employees, helping them stay on top of that, mm -hmm. their role as fiduciaries in that respect as well. And I will tell you, Sean, we have a 401k, which I'm so proud to have, at my office and we probably have commitments legally every couple of months we are filling out forms there's a lot of year-end commitments so that is yes. no small thing no. you know the the responsibilities under the 401k so right. speaking of the 401k what about the illinois secure plus that's right. kind of a buzzword now for companies so tell us what that means and how it impacts Sure. Employers and employees. Sure. So the uh, Illinois Secure Choice, it's been a plan to be put in place over the last several years. It's been a little bit dragged out with, uh, through 2020, but the uh, intent of it is to provide if more Illinoisans, more people access to retirement savings through work. Mm -hmm. So there's been a as, as it's been rolled out over the last few years, mandates for employers who have a certain number of employees to uh, either have a 401k plan for themselves, a retirement plan for the company, or uh, uh, make use of this new Illinois state-run system where people would be, uh, you'd be required to make deposits on behalf of your employees mm -hmm. into this, this state program. Uh, so there's been, uh, I think it, it's, uh, Great the, the intent of it, and it will for some business it'll it'll work uh, easily to set up payroll contributions for their employees, but others other employers who want to have a little more more control over the the plan and have more of the benefits of having a full 401k plan can work with someone like myself to uh, design a plan around their company take into account their the type of business that they're in, the employees that they have, different, people, different pay scales, and how long the owners have been in place, and uh, provide a, a number of other additional benefits, right. tax-wise, particularly. So am I hearing that the Illinois Secure Plan may not be perfect, but it's better than nothing for, and, a, oh. and, and some option for small companies? Absolutely. I think anything that will give more people the, the chance to set aside a little bit of savings, yeah. each paycheck yeah. will, uh, you know, it may take some years, but that does add up. Mm -hmm. Especially for younger employees who have the yes. benefit of time on their side. Definitely. Right? So, um, is there a typical investment strategy? What, do you have a typical, is there a strategy that everyone follows? I mean, how unique and individual it, is it? And how do you prepare your clients for retirement? Sure. Okay, great. So as far as uh, working with individuals and setting up a, an investment strategy that's more hands-on and actually picking uh, the allocations and things as opposed to in the 401k plan just setting up the the menu and letting people kind of pick it themselves mm -hmm. um, when i'm working with someone in defining an investment plan there are 
some general uh, allocations, some general models that I would start off with based on things like their, their age and what the, the money is going to be used for, whether it's something you know, 10 years out, like planning for college, or 30 plus years down the road, like planning mm -hmm. for retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, a, a base place where I would start in terms of just building a, a diversified portfolio. Uh, I'm not a, an advisor who tries to uh, make new trades every day and pick the next hot stock uh, for the, the coming week. Uh, it's much more of a, a long-term approach. Okay. So uh, I'd say every, no one has the exact same plan, but it starts with a, a foundation of having a, uh, a real set of rules in, in place on how to build those portfolios okay. for each individual. And how have you helped your clients navigate the last six months? Um, we're starting to climb back up now, but right up until really the beginning of January, it was kind of scary. So how do you calm the storms, the well, fears during those dips in the market? At, well, at six months, I almost have to pull it back to the last two, three years have been very emotional for people investing, mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. through the, the COVID crash and a, a huge rebound mm -hmm. uh, for, for almost two years. Uh, this past year has been definitely challenging. Uh, the last six months coming off of the you know, bottom of the end of September, uh, making up some ground and now having a rough February, it's, it has been, been challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, from a you know, general standpoint, again, as I was saying, it makes a big difference if you're someone who is using their portfolio to say, take income from right now, if they're in retirement, or if they have a long way for yeah. it, it to grow. Yeah. So the, those younger folks uh, just have to encourage them that to keep saving and weather through the ups and downs. Uh, and even those folks who felt like they missed out on some of that 2020, 2021 boom are getting a chance to uh, buy those same investments at, at lower prices. Um, but a big part of my job is helping people uh, understand about where they're invested and why we have certain investments set up. Mm -hmm and keep that the bigger picture focus and know that what uh, may be uh, on the news every day is not technically what's going on in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And the day-to-day -day changes in the markets can have, are likely have a small impact on the bigger picture ability to say, retire at the age that they'd like. Yeah. And what mistakes do you see people make? I mean, do you see people pulling out their money when, during uh, a downturn like last year? That is one of the bigger things. Uh, and it does come up. Uh, clients ask if it's the time to, to get out, or uh, I think it tends to come after they've had periods of a few statements where the values aren't as high as they, they were uh, mm -hmm. at the height a year or two ago. Uh, people can get to a point where it feel like I don't want to see any lower numbers. Let's just uh, pull money out and we'll uh, avoid having the, uh, the stress of that. Uh, the question, or at least the next decision that someone have to make to doing that is when they would get back in. Mm -hmm. And if you're constantly or repeatedly over business cycle to business cycle, taking your money out after it's gone down and then waiting for uh, uh, stock prices to Could be higher, mm -hmm. you're buying in, you're doing the opposite of what we you try to do in investing. You're uh, selling low and buying high, yeah. and selling low again and buying high. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it is a challenge and I'm not, uh, I can't remove all the emotions from mine or other people's financial decisions, but I try to uh, invest to uh, mm -hmm. keep them focused on the, the bigger picture. The long, the long picture, the long view, the big picture for yes. sure. Sean, what separates you in the industry? What's sure. your unique parking spot? Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, there are a lot of very qualified people who, uh, like myself, have some uh, certif certificates and certifications and letters after their, their name. Uh, I think at this point, having done this as long as I've done it, I found a good, uh, I'd say, the, the types of clients that I work with and the, the way that I'm able to 
uh, dig deep into a more comprehensive financial planning for those individuals, uh, particularly the, the business owner clients that I work with have a lot more questions, a lot more complexities when it comes to things like, uh, like taxes and estate planning and uh, look to me to uh, take care of some things for them that are either very complicated or, or time consuming. Uh, so I, I think that my experience with working with some bigger businesses in the 401k space also helps me uh, understand not only the smaller entrepreneur like myself, but uh, uh, also bigger companies and bigger questions and issues. Yeah, and you mentioned estate planning. So since yes. you mentioned it, how do you see encouraging your clients to get wills, trust, powers of attorney, and to place? How does that, uh, how do you, uh, and why do you encourage that, and how do you see that work sure. uh, towards the retirement goals? So as part of our comprehensive financial planning uh, program and the steps that we go through as I bring in a new client and understand their financial position, we look at all of these different areas beyond just the, the investing and how much they're saving, but also what can they fine tune in terms of taxes and making sure that everything that they've built up by doing all of these other things right, uh, that those, those assets that they've accumulated they go to the people and organizations that they'd uh, like to see them go to yeah, once yeah. they're not around to use them anymore. Mm -hmm. So it is a, uh, I'd say it at first, it's a state planning is a checklist item. Uh, we uh, always do a, a beneficiary review. You wouldn't, I don't know if you'd be mm -hmm. surprised, but most people would be surprised about uh, it's outdated and incorrect beneficiaries that I find at folks' accounts as well. And that part of that also having uh, encouraging people to look at getting a trust or at the very least having the wills, power of attorneys, making some of those difficult decisions. Uh, I think it's it's difficult for some people to talk about or, or think about who should say, take care of my children if we weren't mm -hmm. here. So people do put those off. But I make sure that it is, yeah, if I am working with someone who is putting off uh, doing the, taking those steps uh, to make sure that it's something we repeatedly bring up and go over. And if they are not working with an estate planning attorney, introduce them to one of the ones that we work with in our practice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do, it's a, I find that as a big value when I am working with and able to coordinate with the other professionals that clients work with. Yes, yes, I always say it's the, the big three are the estate planning attorney, the financial planner, and the CPA to yeah. really help you manage your affairs and your money. Sean, what's the most rewarding part of what you do? Well, the most rewarding, I, there are, uh, Day to day, every once in a while, it gets just a, a great feeling from a, a client, or whether it's uh, just that I know I've gone a little further to get something done for someone, and they uh, tell me how much they they appreciate it. Um, it's you know when I can do something where I feel like it's not only using the best of my experience and knowledge and expertises and other resources to do something, but uh, if I'm able to go a little further personally to take care of something it, and uh, clients who share how much they appreciate it, that's what really makes me feel yeah. good about it. And now a little of the man behind the financial planner, Sean. So here you stand. Um, I don't know if you told us a little bit about your family, but I know you have. Mm -hmm. You still have a yo younger children, school age children. Yes. Um, you've had this rewarding practice for all these years. So, what what do you? What's your view in the world now? Where do you stand? Have you figured it all out? You oh, know, I, what, I figured you it all out. Okay. Uh, you no mystery out? left. So. No. Tell um, us, tell us what your big take in the world is. Sure. Okay, that's a big question. It uh, is. Well, as you mentioned, I do have a, a seven-year-old son, Reed, and a seventeen-year-old daughter, Rory, who's getting ready to go off to school in in the fall. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and my wife Megan, we've been, and Mary, we just uh, celebrated our anniversary uh, it, on New Year's Eve. Uh, so, a 
gosh, as far as my view on the world, uh, I think it's, uh, it's evolving, but uh, very much you know, concern for my, my uh, immediate family mm -hmm. and my bigger family, like those cousins and aunts and uncles that everyone I talked about yeah. previously. Mm -hmm. Concerns about uh, sending my little girl out into the, the big world yeah. in college next year. Um, it's, uh, it, I personally, uh, and maybe it's a way, one of the reasons I got into being an entrepreneur is uh, that I could make sure they make time for the, the family commitments yeah. and keeping those bonds strong that are closest yeah. to us. And having your child head off to college, which I'm just a <clears throat> yeah. couple years ahead of you there, the, the sense that we hope we've done it right because they're cooked, yeah. they're done. They still need lots of guidance, lots of our resources over the coming years, but there's yeah. a sense that we hope we've done it right because off they go and now they're going to have to use all those skills we gave them to navigate the day by day uh, decisions of life by themselves. Yeah. So how about if we wrap up, Sean, with a favorite uh, poem or quote or some some words to live by? Uh, sure. Well, I'm glad that she did ask me that. Uh, I do have a, a quote that I've written down on a post-it note in, on my desk that was from a, uh, a poem. The, the quick line is, the uh, promise made is a debt unpaid. Uh, it comes from a poem that's uh, meaningful to me because it, my grandfather used to read to all, all of us, and all those cousins. It's called The Cremation of Sam McGee. Uh, and as a, an adult is when I pull out that single quote, but the, the poem, it's a, it's a long story. It's about uh, men in around 1900, Alaska, gold rush period, mushing their, their dogs across the, the wilderness, uh, searching for gold. And the, the protagonist, the narrator poem, at one point has to you know, set aside his, his pursuit of uh, finding that gold in order to make good on a promise that he made, a last wishes promise to a friend of his on the, the trail. And uh, as I said, it, I in, always enjoyed the poem as a child, but pulled out the uh, promise made as a debt unpaid quote as it relates uh, to my business in that it is a, a service business and fulfilling commitments to people day to day is the a big if not the biggest part of what I do so if I can uh, fulfill those, those promises I think I'm at least doing the, a good job in some yeah. major respect. Absolutely you, you really are Sean and, and viewers when I asked uh, for some ideas yesterday for the show from Sean and he told me how much the cremation of Sam McGee, that poem had meant to him, I just immediately called my sister because that cremation of Sam McGee, my father also used to read that he would recite it to us and we love to listen to it. It's, it's, it's a beautiful poem, a long epic poem. Yes. Uh, just great words and a lot of humor in it. And, uh, and, and huh. we associate that with growing up and listening to my father. I never isolated out that one line that you have isolated out. And, and I, I, I think that is such a resonance that a, yes. a promise made is a debt unpaid. So uh, Sean and I Thank were you. good friends and good co-workers before and I feel we're bonded to <laughs> the cremation of yes. Sam McGee. Sean, that was wonderful. Um, uh, Thank you, why Robin. don't you tell our viewers how to get a hold of you uh, if they would like to know more about your financial services? Great. So again, with High Point Planning Partners in, in Orland Park, uh, I can I can provide my uh, email address maybe to, to the show here, but it's just uh, sean.oshea at lpl.com. And um, phone number to the office is 708-789-9518. Uh, I'd be happy to answer questions folks have for businesses that have questions about the Illinois Secure Choice. Uh, I'm just glad that you invited me on the show Lovely. today. Lovely, and we were glad to have you, Sean. Thanks so much for your insight. Thank you, viewers, for watching, and we will see you next time on Where the Road Rises. Goodbye.